Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick, and today is Tuesday. It's September the 13th. It's time for our daily devotion, and I'm pleased to report we're starting a new book today. It's the book of Colossians, and Colossians is an exciting book. It's 95 verses long in total, four chapters, uh, but there's a lot here. So we're going to be starting today in chapter 1, verse 1, if you'd like to turn there now and join me. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, in the gospel which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is, bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together, And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him, if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy, that he powerfully works within me. Okay, so, boy, this is a lot of deep theology to take in here in just this first chapter. Um, You know, there's a lot that's talking about Jesus as our Savior and what it means um, as to be a part of his, uh, what's a part of his identity. Now, Paul starts out this letter by naming a certain individual named Epaphras. And that we know of, Paul never traveled to the city of Colossae, but maybe while he is in the city of Ephesus, he sent out ministers or evangelists who may have come to Colossae. And it looks like Epaphras was one of them because he's mentioned in the early parts of this book and says, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. So there's a commonality there between Epaphras and Paul and the congregation. And then Epaphras is also mentioned at the very end of the book as well. And it seems that Epaphras is coming to Paul as he is in prison 
making Paul aware of a certain heresy that's happening in Colossae that's going to be talked about later on in the book. And then Paul is writing the Colossians to encourage them to avoid this heresy. And like I said, we'll be getting into that later this week. But uh, such a wonderful hymn that we have here, starting in verse 15. Uh, it's, it's very much a doxological hymn, gives praise to Christ. It starts out talking about Jesus as the firstborn and uh, rather as the, the image of the invisible God, and it names creation. And then it moves on and talks about him as the firstborn from the dead. So right now we have resurrection, even new creation. Uh, we have salvation uh, being talked about um, by the blood of his cross. And then finally, moving on to the section here of, of reconciliation, that we are reconciled to God. And, you know, our reconciliation to God is what we call forensic, meaning that in a legal sense, we have been declared righteous before God because of Christ. We're not yet righteous in our flesh. That doesn't happen until the resurrection of all flesh on the last day. But we're getting some anticipations of that today uh, because we are resurrected spiritually. And uh, we have faith in Christ and the forgiveness of our sins and the promise of life everlasting. And then when Jesus returns, we'll have all these things bodily. And Paul closes out this chapter talking about uh, this being a great mystery that was hidden for ages but is now being revealed, meaning that uh, with the coming of Jesus, the revelation of God is now fully known as God becomes flesh and as God um, reveals himself to the world in Jesus uh, at the incarnation and then, of, of course, at the cross when he dies for sin and then when he's resurrected and ascends into heaven. All right, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Okay, uh, announcements for today. So tomorrow is youth night at 6 p.m. with choir happening at 7.30. And then Thursday, as we've been talking about all week, we have Mahjong at 10 a.m. in the morning, followed by Grief Share at 7 p.m. at night. Um, church garage sale is coming up. We're asking you to hold your items until the Wednesday before. So that'll be um, a week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow, you may bring up your items, and this is going to be on the 22nd, okay? So uh, after 2 p.m., because we have to wait until preschool gets out, preferably like 2.30 or 3. So you can start bringing your items up then. We really need some help bringing the items out at 6 a.m. If you can get here at 6 a.m. on Saturday morning, uh, the 24th, for the start of our garage sale, we'll bring the items outside and uh, for the sale. We're also looking for people who can help bring the items, price the items on Friday. Uh, and so if you are interested in that, you can let Deaconess Elizabeth know. She'd love to have your help. And there will be lunch here on Saturday, the day of the garage sale. So uh, this is our annual fundraiser for the youth so that they can go on the Higher Things trip. And so we hope that you can support us um, this week in ministry and next week as we get ready for these big events. Okay. That's all the announcements I have for right now. Thank you for watching Daily Devotions. I'll be back with you tomorrow as we hit Colossians chapter 2.